Because virtual reality isn't limited by the same restrictions we have in actual reality, it makes it one of the best places to go around and goof about because you can really do just about anything. Whether it's flying over a city, watching destruction happen, or spawning in a whole bunch of random weapons, tools, or what have you. So that way you can goof around in a plain old empty level and just do whatever you want to do. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how we can do just that. How we can spawn in any object we want and have it in a little neat inventory display so that way we're able to see what we're spawning before it gets spawned in. But before we jump into that, if you enjoy this video, consider supporting VR Playground on Patreon. You don't have to, but it's a great way to help support the channel so I can keep on providing great tutorials like this one. And with that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so I've gone ahead and uh, set up our inventory component here, um, or, or our creative uh, inventory component here. Um, so, by the way, I should mention, um, I believe this is just an index thing, but the grab component does seem to be a little bit finicky, at the very least with the index controllers. I haven't noticed the same issue with like Quest 2 or anything, so um, in case, I'm probably going to run into an issue with releasing here, so I just figured I'd share that here real quick, that that may just be an index issue. I'm, I'm really not entirely sure. Um, I really only run into it with the grab component too. It's really weird. Anyway, so this is what our, uh, our little uh, creative inventory component here is going to look like, or it's actually an actor. Um, and actually it looks pretty nice. So the whole idea is that this is all in some sort of display. And so we can just kind of reach in, we can grab the component. And you may have actually seen because the actual uh, grab cube is a little bit bigger than what I have on display in here. And all this can be changed around too. You don't have to use this material. This is the glass material. You don't have to use a sphere. You don't even have to use this actor. This can all be changed. Um, and this is kind of what I was talking about. So like I said, I'm pretty sure this is an index issue. I haven't run into this issue with any other headsets yet. If you guys run into this issue, by the way, let me know in the comments. I'd be genuinely curious to, to know if you guys run into the same issue with the grab component. Um, anyways, this... So yeah, this is really neat. Um, so all you do is you just stick your hand in. I smacked a light. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I can just kind of reach in, I can grab them and they work just like regular cubes and I can spawn as many as, a, as I would like. Um, this, is, ooh, this is a little bit um, lower than probably what you would want. You'd probably want this a little bit higher than where this is at currently. But yeah, so this is our grab component. So let's go and jump into the tutorial and I can show you exactly how to build something just like this for yourself. For this tutorial, I'll be using both the grabbable small cube as well as the grab component. Both of these are provided in the Unreal Engine 5 VR template. And I'll be using both of these because this really allows for the whole process to be simplified down a whole lot. So we don't have to worry about having to drop in new interfaces or design new components or all sorts of other miscellaneous things that we might need to do in an older Unreal Engine VR template. Now, if you don't have these available, however, you can certainly still follow along with this tutorial. Just keep in mind that you may need some alternatives to these. The grabable small cube, for example, is just the random cube that we're gonna be using in order to actually grab onto whenever we spawn something into the level. So if you have something different that you'd like to use, you can certainly use that as well. Now let's go ahead and start by designing our actor that we're going to be using in order to spawn in whatever actor we want to use. To do this, I'm going to go and create a new folder called Blueprints in our content browser, and then I'm going to create a new Blueprint class of type actor. Once you have your actor open, Let's go ahead and start by adding in a static mesh component. This static mesh is going to be what we actually see around the actor that we're going to be spawning in. This is going to act as our sort of display that we're going to be using. In this case, I'm going to give our static mesh a sphere with a glass material. To me, this just looks really nice and it just makes a very nice, simple display that we're able to use. Once you have this in place, you also need to make sure that this stack mesh is able to overlap all dynamic. This is just gonna make sure that we're able to use our grab component just as we would normally expect to on this actor. Once you have these in place, last thing you need to do is go ahead and drop the static mesh as the root component and attach a grab component. 
You also want to make sure that this grab component is set to grab custom and not grab free like it's set by default. Reason being is that we don't want this specific actor to be grabbable by the player, but rather we're going to be modifying the grab function that we usually have, so that way we're able to spawn in a new actor, whatever one that we're going to have in our display happens to be, and then go ahead and attach that actor to our hand instead. Once all your components and all that are set up and all in place, just as you see here, go ahead and scroll to the bottom of the details on your grab component, and you wanna get the event on grabbed. This is going to be used in order to apply that custom grab type that I had mentioned just a second ago. This should also bring you into the event graph, and now that we're here, we're ready to go ahead and start applying our blueprint code. Starting off in the event begin play, we want to go ahead and spawn an actor by class. In order to make this actor reusable so that way we can use it for countless number of actors that we want to spawn in, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go and take the actor class and promote that to a variable. You also want to make sure that this variable is public so that way we're able to access this variable and change it around from actor to actor if we choose to have multiple of these creative inventory components in our scene at the same time. Once you have that variable set, also go ahead and set your transform. This can really be anything because we're going to be modifying this in one second anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and just split the transform so that way we don't need to worry about adding in extra nodes or anything like that. Everything is just good to go. And then I also wanna make sure that this actor always spawns regardless of collisions. Now because we're set to overlap all, this really shouldn't be an issue, but I usually like doing this when I want to make sure that something spawns, just, just as a precaution to make sure that nothing can possibly go wrong. Once this actor is spawned, next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and attach this actor to the component. In this case, we want to attach it to that static mesh component that we have in this actor, and then we want to make sure that the location and rotation both snap to target, and the scale really doesn't matter once again. We're going to be modifying that again since this can probably change from actor to actor since you may have some big actors, some small actors, and you want them all to fit in a single small inventory actor. With that in mind, after you've attached this actor component, next we need to set the scale on this same actor that we have here. In order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and set actor scale 3D. And then I'm going to promote the new scale 3D in here to a variable once again. This will allow for us to take bigger objects and scale them down even more, and smaller objects if we need to scale them up or just keep them the same size if we need to in order to make it a little bit easier on the player. Finally, I just wanna take this, this actor one more time and I wanna make sure that the collision on this actor is disabled. This is just to make sure that if this actor does in fact have a grab component like we're assuming that it does, that it won't get in the way of using the, the actor that we're using in this moment. It's gonna make sure that it cannot possibly be detected by the player and that we can't accidentally grab this display actor rather than trying to spawn in a new one like we want to do. Now as a quick note, some of you guys may be wondering why we don't do this in the construction script. After all, it might make a little bit more sense given that if we have this in the construction script, we can see what all this looks like before we even start playing our level, before we even start simulating or anything like that. And the reason is simple. We actually can't. The reason being is that we can't spawn an actor in the construction script. The construction script just simply won't allow it. So the next best option is to do it in the begin play. Now, while this might not be the best option, if we go ahead and hit simulate at any point, we can see what this actor is going to look like during play. And again, like I said, this may not be the best solution, but this allows for us a solution, allows for us to still have this actor work customly for each actor that we want to spawn. With the event begin play all set up, now let's go ahead and move on to the on grabbed. And this is going to be the last section for actually spawning our actor. In order to do this, we're going to go ahead and spawn actor, and we're going to take that same actor class that we stored as a variable at the beginning. This is also why I wanted to make sure that we had this variable stored. It just simplifies the whole process here, so we don't need to worry about having a whole bunch of nodes in order to determine what actor we should have. 
Once this is done, you also want to determine a transform. For me, I like just spawning this transform on the actor itself, so I'm just going to get our actor transform and pass that in. But if you'd like, you can also pass in the motion controller transform as well. Then again, I'm also just going to make sure that this actor always spawns, ignoring collisions. Again, this shouldn't be an issue given that this actor is set to overlap and our display actor that we have inside has no collision whatsoever. But just as a precaution, make sure that we can't possibly run into any issues. This is just going to save us a little bit of a headache in case we happen to have some kind of issue there. Now that we've spawned in this actor, now we need to actually grab this. In order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and get this component then I'm going to go ahead and find a component by class. This class is going to, of course, as you may have guessed, be the grab component. And before we go on any further, I'm also going to make sure that this grab component is valid. Once we've determined that this component is valid, then we want to try grab on the grab component. The try grab also requires a motion controller reference so that we were able to know what exactly it is we're grabbing. And this is actually pretty simple to get if you're using the grab component. If we go ahead and get the grab component that we have in this actor, we can go ahead and get the motion controller reference. With that all done, we can go ahead and take our actor, drop it into the scene, go ahead and give it an actor class and set the scale for this actor class, and that should be all good to go. With that, we now have a very simple creative inventory actor that allows for us to have both a really nice looking display as well as be able to have something that's functional and allows for us to spawn in whatever grabbable actor we would like. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And I also want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.